Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to show you how to play Blossoms by Rebel. It's ages eight and up, two players, and it takes about 20 minutes. Let me show you how to play. The goal of the game is to collect the most points, which you do by growing and then cutting flowers, which you collect. Uh, there is a scorecard to tell you how much each uh, number of flowers is worth once you collect it. To start, you shuffle all of the flower cards into a pile and then one at a time place out flowers over these four flower pots. They must be each a different kind of flower. If you get any multiples, you put the multiple off to the side and keep on drawing and playing until there are four different kinds out here. Shuffle any discarded flowers back into the pile. Take the top card, discard it into the box. It will not be used this game. And then each player is dealt two cards into their hand and they are given three special action tokens each. Okay, let's say red player gets to go first. To start every turn, you must first draw a card from this pile and if it matches one of these flowers, you play it on the stack. You can continue to draw cards as long as you want, as long as they keep on matching, your turn would continue. But if you draw one, and it doesn't match any of these flowers, it is bad luck, and it is discarded, and your turn is immediately over. But if that didn't happen, I'm just gonna stick this back in. Let's say you keep on drawing, and ooh, you keep on getting things that match. You are very lucky. Um, you can continue to draw until you get bad luck, and then your turn is over or you have a couple other options of play after you've drawn your first card. You can play a card from your hand, if you like, on the top of a stack that matches. But if you do that, there's four roses here. So you put another one on. You cannot draw any more cards after this. Uh, you can either pass and just end your turn now, or you can cut and collect this card into your hand. So this is five, you can go to a max of six, and this player would cut it and put it off to the side on their side, and their turn is now over. If you cut, it must be at least two flowers to cut. Now it is blue's turn to go, red's turn is over, and it's actually very nice when someone has just cut a flower because when you draw your first card, that's the first move every time, it matches here, so they play it here, but they can continue to draw, and if it's a flower that doesn't match, it just gets to be planted in the empty flower pot. Now, they can continue to draw, they can plant one of these flowers if they match, they can pass, or they can use one of their special action tokens, which, as you can see, each of these flower pots has a different picture on them, and they each correspond with a different special action. With the watering can, if they place a token here, they can take one of their flowers and they can add it to the bottom of any of these flowers, even if it doesn't match. And the secondary effect of that is if they then end their turn and this person draws and they play a bunch of tulips, they cannot cut this flower. This flower is reserved for this person until their next turn, at least. Um, if you get the pruning shears, you may draw a new card into your deck. You are only allowed to do one special action per turn. You can't just put out three and be a special action hero for a round. You must only do one per turn. You go, your special action is on this, it can't be cut, and then it's the other person's turn and when it comes back to you, this gets discarded and is out of the game for the rest of the game. So we have watering can, get to place a card underneath. Uh, pruning shears, you get to draw a new card to be um, put into your hand. And they have little pictures below to kind of help you uh, remember. The fence allows you to ignore bad luck. So if they hadn't played this, we'll just put things how they were. And if they were busy drawing and trying to make as large of flowers as they could, and they keep on going, they're doing great. <gasps> this came up and they really don't want their turn to be over. They can go ahead and place this 
right here and they will ignore the bad luck and they can continue to draw or they might choose to go ahead and cut this while the time is right and then they would have a flower. The final power is my favorite and it is a rake that allows you to see the future. So you have to play it um, after you've already drawn one card, then you can play the token here and you draw the top three cards from the pile and look at them and you can rearrange them in any order that you like. So they would do, put this on top because these two wouldn't play and we'll put this back in like it didn't happen. And so they could play this and then say, okay, that's it. I'm going to cut my flower and put it over here by their side and have their turn be over. The other player, when it's their turn, you can still plant flowers in this spot. You just cannot cut from the special action token spot that the other person has. And also, this person cannot use the same power on their turn now. So it's back to Red's turn and they can go ahead and draw and they get a new one here and they say, oh, I would like to see the future. They cannot do that by placing a token on the rake. It is one person at a time. Okay, so this person uh, drew that card. They're gonna draw again. Uh-oh, bad luck. So they say, I'm gonna use a special action as well and put their token here. So bad luck doesn't count. They get to go again. Hooray, they got another good flower. And uh-oh, bad luck again. They can't play another token there. So their turn is over. It is now back to Blue's turn. They have to take this token off. It gets discarded. And now they must draw their first card and see how they're doing. And they're going to cut that because it's five. That's pretty great. Put it off here by their growing stack of flowers and their turn is over. Every once in a while, you may have a scenario where if it's Red's turn, and blue just picked this flower, cut this flower right here. Red goes and this flower, the poppy is up to six high. Now, you might be tempted to keep on drawing because there's an empty space here that could be filled. But if you draw a card and it's another poppy, so you're up to seven flowers high, your flower has grown too much and it dies. So you have to discard the whole thing and put it over here and your turn is over. Let's skip ahead to an end of a game. It is Red's turn and they're going to draw a card. It plays and they're going to draw the final card and that played as well. And now they can choose to either uh, add the card from their hand to a pile, but that doesn't really make any sense. They're not gonna do that. So they're just gonna pick one and cut it and their turn is over. Now, because Red started the game, it is now Blue's turn. If Blue had drawn the final card, it would have been game over because there's an even number of turns per player that was given. But because Red had gone first, Blue gets one more turn to make it even. So Blue cannot perform the grow action, but they can perform all of the subsequent actions if they want after that. Now blue is very fortunate because they still have one special action token left uh, and they have one card left. Uh, so here they're going to choose to play the watering can because even though this doesn't match, they can play it underneath and grow this to a pile of five and then cut it. And at this point, the game is over. Okay, at this point, we just add up our flower totals. Uh, obviously blue team has many more flowers than red team and one the poppy incident was very unfortunate for red but we'll still show you how to add up the totals so you can see what the official scores are this is a pile of this card here tells you the different amounts of points per numbers of flowers collected um, per flower so here this is five flowers equals 10 points. This is another pile of five flowers. It's another 10 points for 20. A pile of four is six. So this is 26 points here plus three different kinds of flowers. So one, two, three flowers is 29 points total was their score. Over here, this is a pile of five for 10, another pile of five for another 10, another pile of five for 10. So that's 30, two piles of four at uh, 
six points each is 42 and they have one, two, three, four different kinds of flour. So they got 46 points to 29 points and that is the game. So that's how to play Blossoms. It's amazing the difference a good theme can make. My son likes this game, but my daughter loves it. And it's a great game to pick up quickly, but there's a lot of strategy to unpack once you play. So check it out. Thanks and see you next time from Gay and Like a Mother. Mm -hmm.